Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a really fun and pretty different painting. It's going to be a little house in the background and a lot of beautiful colors. But of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I've got a pencil sketch up here. There's a little house or barn or building, whatever it is. And I've got most everything else kind of sketched in too. Now I've got some blue and white and we're just gonna drop in our sky up here. And our sky, we're only gonna take it down to the mountains because the mountains are clearly sketched in very accurately. We'll know just where to stop when we normally paint. I wear a little bit more loose than this, but when I do buildings and complicated, Subject matters, eh, not that this one's that hard. It's just the building. I wanted to make sure I got the proportions right, which you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I clearly missed there. It took me a couple tries to get the proportions right. So that's why I would suggest sketching with a pencil when you do buildings. A little easier than freehanding it, although you, you can freehand it if you want to. Now I'm just finishing up kind of softening some clouds that I threw in in two seconds. You guys have seen how to do that. And now I've grabbed a little bit of, what is this, a light green on the filbert brush. And let's see, I, I think right here, that looks about right. I'm gonna start throwing in my little mountains. I, I kind of lost my sketch, but I know ex about where it is. I was gonna say exactly, I don't know exactly. I know about where it is or should be. There it goes, I'm purposely going under that house like that, okay? Because you wouldn't want it to hit the roof, right? You wouldn't want it to stop right at the peak. That would be kind of weird. So, in order to, to keep it not weird, we'll do it that way. And then this can come down. Good. And we'll separate this with a little bit of dark or light or who, who knows what. I'm just throwing down some color for now. And once we're finished with this, we may or may not need to wipe it down with a paper towel. We'll see how wet it gets. There's not really any medium down here at all. So, that should keep everything pretty sticky. Now I'm going to work on a little meadow back here. And... I've got just, a, let me show you the color a bit, just a little bit of red kind of going in this color because I want autumn, I want it to feel a little bit like autumn colors. Now, of course, in the background, I wouldn't want too much of this, but I might splash it, you know, in and around just a bit here and there up on the mountains. We can do that when we're done with the, we can wait, we can do that later. We can do that when we're done with our meadow. But anyway, we'll pick up a little bit of the green, work it in. You guys kind of know how to do this. You don't have to underpaint little meadows in the background simply because you can allow it to pick up the paint, you know, and move it around and look, there's your shadow. It's as easy as that, no big deal. There we go. Nice, now let's go right down to the road and probably stop right about there. Then I'll do that side, but we'll do that side differently, so don't do it yet. Next with our filbert brush here, I'm just gonna drop in our road. And you can do this with many colors, I think that's what we should do. Actually, we should probably, remember that technique we did, I think, last week, where we just slap down color and then mush it all together? We should do that. It'll be fun again. It would be fun again. So there you go. I got random colors going, and this is just a quick way to do it. You can, you, you know, you can do what I was going to do and just mush it in with a filbert brush. It would take you a little longer. You'd get the same effect. There we go. I'm just layering on the color. Maybe go with a little bit lighter and brighter in the background. That's always good. Lighter and brighter. All right, what do you think? Good enough? It looks like a little bit of a mess. Grab a bigger brush and just melt all of this together. You can wipe this area off with a paper towel later if you want to. We may or may not need to. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. Nice. Look at how red that is. I mean, a little too red, so you just take a little green, you throw it in. It's one of the easy things about this. Easy to change. Look at that. Look at that. That's pretty. And we're kind of keeping with the, the color scheme. So I went ahead and laid out this area just like I did the road. And it's not random. You see, I've got some darks and lights exactly where I want the shadows and the highlights. So now I've got a, a fan brush and I put a little white paint into it just to kind of get something into the brush. And I'm just going to come in here and, and begin to kind of touch. Because I'm doing the highlight and the shadow at the same time, I can get a, a little more, I don't know, fluffiness to the grass. Now, having said that, we're not at all and anyway, locked into this. We may want to bring the building down. We may want to add more highlight and shadow. Who knows what we can do to all this. One important thing to note is you do want to get this canvas covered pretty well. There. Look at this, and there's a lot of paint on here, so I think we're gonna to have to probably take a paper towel and, and remove some of it. Because we're gonna definitely not want to just leave it this way. No, we want to, we want to put on a, 
a bit of a final highlight later on in the painting. So we probably have to wipe this off. But at least this kind of gets us a lot of, I mean, things that would take you, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to paint if you were to put in all these colors very deliberately, individually with the brush, you know, as you go. I just slap them on with the filbert, you know, mix them. Look at my palette, see? <laughs> my palette's a mess. And look at all these variations you get automatically. A little bit random and a little bit thought out. Now I'll mix up kind of a brown red color, fairly dark on the three quarter brush. And let's get this little building painted in. Maybe this is a tiny, a tiny little cabin or a tiny barn, whatever it is, it's just not that big. Because there's the door and that's cool. Sometimes, hey, sometimes you want those kind of buildings. Now I know what you're thinking. What's going on with this one point perspective? Because I don't normally do one point perspectives. That is, you know, painting just straight on. Well, number one, number one, and this isn't that important, but it's not totally one point. I will give it just a little bit of something on that left side, I think. That's number one, but honestly, it still looks straight on. So here's my thought. As you've already probably seen from the picture of it, we're gonna do some tree leaves that come all the way over. That's what this painting's gonna be, focused on a beautiful limb that goes all the way across our painting from one side to the other with huge tree leaves covering most of the background and a lot of this cabin. So this is just not that important. Actually, this could be a farm. What if this was a little building, like a little shed for a farm? That could be cool. In fact, maybe it looks more like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, whatever it is, we're just gonna get it painted in. And then we'll highlight it in, well, in a few minutes. We'll wait and get some of the, the bushes around it done. Now let's begin adding some highlight to the road here. We may come back kind of toward the very, very end and add some accent highlights and good stuff like that, but let's get the bulk of it done right now. And then if we feel like it, we can get more done later. So here's a little, little bit more red into my color. You see I squirted out some more yellow, using up a lot of, a lot of good paint today, mostly because we've been putting it on and taking it off, but that's okay because it leaves the canvas really stained. The, the paint worked well into the canvas so that you won't get muddy areas. Remember, controlling your paint on the canvas is like a number one thing you can do in order to make your paintings a lot better. There we go. Nice. As we go back, you know, just maybe let your strokes get a little smaller so that it kind of adds a little depth and distance for you almost automatically. Nice. I've got a nice bright color right here, ready to go. And very, this time I'll do very carefully, run a dotted line right along the roof. It'll look just like it's being hit by the sun. Now I'm kind of finishing up here, texturizing this grass. I just went through here with a little light and dark and just made it feel a little more like fluffy grass and a little bit less like brush strokes. Now let me grab, yeah, here we go. A little detail round and just some more paint, <laughs> a lot of paint, some yellow and white. And right in here toward the center of interest or one of the centers of interest, I guess. I just want to see if I can touch broken lines here and just dab on some more paint. This has got to be pretty highly texturized. There it is. Just to help. I mean, if you do this all over the place, it won't look like grass, but just a little bit of this will help make it look like the sun is burning through. So please don't overdo this. You can kind of go up and down vertical as well if you start to get larger areas. Because of course it gets bigger as you come into the foreground. So I don't know, play around with this for a minute and see what kind of an effect you can make. We're trying to make this look really sunlit, but this brush is softer. And so it layers better than the fan brush. So use a fan brush first and this one second. And no mudding, no muddying of the colors at all. As you can see, I quickly sketched in our little fences. And the reason I say sketched is I just very quickly, you know, went down kind of broken lines. The idea is if I didn't like the placement, that would be very easy to mush into the background rather than, you know, drawing in the entire size. So now that I have each one placed where I like it in the background, ones are pretty much done just with a single brush stroke. Now we come back in here and start filling these things in bigger because these fence posts are actually part of the painting. They're not just there for the sake of being there. They're actually part of the painting. What I mean, you know, the composition, they're part of 
what people will end up focusing on, the fences. So, you know, we want to make sure we get them thick enough. This one here, see I'm making it so much thicker than it was, bringing it all the way down to the road, but that is risky. <laughs> Unless, of course, you know where the placement, placement is. And I do now, so there's no risk at all. That's why two extra seconds of sketching in your painting saves you 10 minutes <laughs> of frustration later. Nah, it's really not that hard to fix, but hey, if you can save just a few minutes, it's worth it, right? Especially, I know I've been talking to a lot of people recently, it seems like people just don't get as much time to paint as they wish they could, so any time-saving tips that I can pass along, I will be sure to do that. And then pretty much from there on is pretty good. Now I went ahead and tossed in a little bit of dark color just to speed us up a little, because let's face it, this may take a minute. Now I'm going to take my little detail round brush, and this one is fairly new. And that's important because you want it to come to a beautiful, sharp point, because this point will resemble a leaf. So as your brushes wear out, you want to save them. Don't throw them away, because they do different things. <laughs> there we go. Yikes. So I mean, a lot of the other stuff in here when I was using my detail round, it was my older one. I usually paint with two or three of each brush. Now I'm grabbing my new one because we're literally going to paint in every leaf. Well, almost every leaf. You can kind of get away with some of that, but don't do that too much. You can do that every once in a while and then come back and then touch it like this. But oh, you got to be careful. All right, this looks good. Now, I'm going to vary my colors, add a little white maybe to this, get some lighter. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, look at that. And here's the thought. There's a limb, a tree way off here that we can't see, and it's got limbs that are coming into the painting. And it's literally like right next to us, like you could put your hand on the tree. And, that, and the limbs are coming up all the way, way up, down, and then I'll have them hook back up. I think that'll be really cool. <laughs> so there you go. There's my thought. I just thought it would be important for you guys to know. Actually, double loading the brush, dark and light, like that, kind of gets you a, I don't know, a nice little effect. Now, I will, I will say something here. If you are at all worried about this, or you think you have too much paint in the sky, you can wipe it down with a paper towel. Nobody's going to care about those clouds. You can totally do that. You can wipe down the mountain, anything you're going over, the cabin even, if you want to. Wipe it with a paper towel and then do this. It'll be better. I'm purposely not going over here yet. I don't care if this mixes with the blue. I don't want it to mix with the black. That would kind of mess up this bright color, so I'm getting all the bright ones in first. Now I'm trying to get just a little bit more green up here, because I do want it to feel, remember, it's not totally autumn. It's somewhere right in between summer and autumn. It's like barely starting to, to turn on some of these trees. So anyway, I'm trying to work some more of this green in here. You can do this two ways, by kind of taking some of these more yellow ones and touching them again. It'll help them mix with the background. I've also loaded some green into my brush, which helps going kind of over some of these orange areas. Now down here I added a lot more red to the color so that we wouldn't get too much green, because I didn't want to go overboard. But maybe every once in a while, even down in here, I can just pop a green in manually. <laughs> now one of the last things we should do up here is add in a bunch of limbs. I don't want it to become busy, which it could but I do need it to look like, like this is really close. Because it's really close, we need to see a lot of limbs. So there you go. <laughs> so I'm trying not to get them too terribly long. I did go ahead and establish my major limbs. And then from there, I'm kind of working off using broken lines. See, I kind of, I leave broken areas where maybe like, especially right there where the leaves might be covering. We can pop some of this back behind the tree, or especially where it got a little extra thick. We can pop that in the middle of the tree with the limbs, or with the leaves. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. I think we should do a few leading kind of right out here. It's a little cabin or house barn thing. <laughs> there, you guys can decide what it is. Sometimes I just let the viewer figure it out. Nice. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.